Okay, so that um, bio, you should be able to open, let me just find it on my desktop here. So this is that, um, the book, one of the books that Aaron was, was talking about. And um, again, I think it's a great kind of book just for reference, um, just to kind of give you, you guys the idea of, of, of ways of doing, it. and it's kind of like in this kind of geographical way. So like these are all A's, and then it will get into other, the B's. Um, so just kind of a way to kind of go through and just kind of see things that are going. Um, like this here, this is the old Bank of America logo. Um, you can see the B and the A, and there's like a bird in here, cat and hidden. Now they have the flag, which I think is a bit better myself, um, considering they are the Bank of America. Um, so some of these logos you might recognize, Many, many, most of them you're not. And, and there is a reference is like, let's say it says 241 or whatever. So if you go to the back, I believe it is all the way on the last page, pages, um, they'll have what those stand for. Okay, so if you just kept going back down, let me just double check the back here. So it's kind of alphabetical. No, they didn't scan it, sorry. But um, those all, they were some kind of guide that said, you know, number 122 is whatever company name. But in reality, not that important. The most important is kind of looking at um, these letters and these, these things that go together um, and how, they, how they're, they're merging them, right? So when we think of something like, you know, like a, a, a U, how there's like a variety of ways that you can utilize that you in combination with itself or others. Um, TWA, that, that's an old logo, Transworld Airlines. Um, you know, but like this T, you know, with this kind of grain coming out of it, right? So it's probably something like flour or farming or some kind of organization like that. This T here, with this kind of beaker, right? So it's probably some kind of chemical or something like that. Um, this T over here, this is, I'm gonna tell you, it's probably some kind of travel, right? There's kind of a globe, there's this T, it also kind of looks like an airplane. Um, it could be like the tail of a plane or it could be a plane taking off type of thing. So, um, you know, it's kind of looking at things and trying to figure out how can you start to bring together new shapes and, and letters, um, you know, or, or these are gonna give you inspiration into some kind of shape or form uh, that will work for you, okay? So, um, you know, take a look at this, put this book on your, your computer, keep it. Um, they're, they're out of print. There might be some available on Amazon or something like that, but um, they're just really awesome books just to kind of look through and just kind of see how you can um, take a letter or a form and kind of, verbalize it into something else that's visually um, pretty sound and pretty pleasing as you go. So um, take a look at that and I think you'll get that. So if you have any problems, let me know. Um, I will put it up on the website uh, for the class also. So we'll get that going. That book is very, very interesting. Yeah, it is cool. And then, because there's an alter, there's another version, and the other one um, might also be available online somewhere. It, it's a, it's an older book, so I'm not sure if it's still within copyright or not. Um, I just found that file online from somebody. So, um, so we were working over here the other day, right? We were trying to play with the idea of the, the Draplin uh, travel and we were kind of goofing off with it and kind of uh, playing around with um, the type and how we can do alternatives. So on this one, I was just kind of inspired at the class last time, just to play with these, what they're called the glyphs. Again, these are like alternatives of the letter forms. So I'm just gonna go back to my touch type tool and as I click it, I can see I'm getting some alternatives here, right? That might work. 
so I can kind of play with these um, to kind of come up with solutions. Sometimes I might want the alternative and sometimes I won't. Like this has got that curly P that comes back upon itself. And it, to me, it's too repetitive there. Excuse me, so I'm gonna keep with the normal. And likewise, there's the E that has this beautiful tail on it um, where this one do doesn't, you know? And that's because I did that by choice. If they both had that same tail, again, it becomes too repetitive. So again, I want you to start to kind of look at um, the relationship of type in this, this logo assignment. So looking to see how the words that you're creating for your agency, and again, we're only talking a few letters, um, can, can be utilized together. And also again, look for the glyphs, okay? So these are in the glyphs for this particular typeface. Um, so if you go to a different typeface, down here is the name of your typeface. You can just kind of, you know, pick something else and see what they have. Now this one really doesn't have any glyphs. It's kind of just the same letters. Um, this one has a few, but the glyphs here are more, um, the accents, okay? So the accent letters that you would find uh, typing with a foreign language, okay? So, you know, if you have to do a foreign language, you can do that. Um, so again, a lot of the better typefaces will have um, at least the alternative typefaces, um, but not all, okay? So you have to kind of look at them and see which ones do. Um, well, we're not changing here. Nothing really there. But know, know that there are, let me come down here. So there's like some numbers that are in circles that might be play. Um, these little marks, SM is a sales mark. There's going to be somewhere in here, probably a TM and the copyright C. See the alternatives for that. Um, there's the C, there's the TM, there's the registered trademark, the R. <clears throat> so again, as you need those kind of things, um, you know, feel free to look those up. Um, some of them have keyboard shortcuts, but a lot of them don't. Uh, and, and as you can see here, we're able to kind of change um, type. In, in this case, I changed one letter, which I didn't want to do actually. So I'm going to put that back in. And then we're just going to delete that last letter, that last E. Okay, so um, pay extra attention with this. And we haven't dealt with type a lot. Um, we were, you know, we've been dealing with photos and Photoshop. Um, we've been, we're starting to look at shapes and combination and drawing things with Illustrator here. But um, with the logo, I really want you to kind of pay attention to topography and how those letters and words that you're, you're putting down kind of work in conjunction and how you can, and can work with it. Um, and again, don't think it has to be like completely lined up. So, you know, this one here is explore more and I think it's pretty legible, um, but I didn't have to line them up right next to each other or put them, you know, end to end, you know, explore and then the word more or, or stack it. You can play with that stack. Um, and then you can even, like I said, come back in and play with uh, doing things like, you know, maybe I make this M a little larger, right? So I'm just kind of using the touch type tool, which allows me to do that. Um, and I'm gonna pull that down, of course, because I want that to sit there. And then I can come back over here to the E, I'm sorry, the O, and pull it back in so it makes it a little bit tighter. So look at that letter spacing between the letter forms, okay? Really kind of get in there and kind of look at that and look at the space and to see if things are, are regular or not. Because um, if you don't, you know, it's the computer may by default do something like, I'm just gonna push it way out there. You know, push the O out in this case away from the M. That's just too far. When you look at it visually, it looks disconnected. So, you know, our job as designers is to make things connected, make things feel like they're supposed to go together. Um, and things I would look at trying to do is tr trying to make sure <clears throat> my spacing on this word is also pretty close or equivalent to what I'm doing up here, right? Um, and a lot of it becomes visual. Um, 
you know, like this P is getting a little close to the X. Um, so I'm gonna again, get, zoom in and just kind of take a couple moments and I'm gonna use the touch type tool so I can do things like the X I think is pretty good. The P, I'm just gonna move over just a couple spaces. And I think I'm gonna pull the L in a little bit. I want to kind of like tuck in, in this case, close to the P. And then I can go to the O. Sometimes you gotta click around just to get them. <clears throat> pull that O in a little bit. <clears throat> and again, I'm always also looking at that relationship between, you know, in this case, the word explore and the word more. And how are the letter forms on the word more in relation? Um, this R can tuck in a little bit more. Let's go here more. I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with most of that. Now I'll double check this again. I'll come back and look at it. But, um, you know, this is pretty much going to be a t-shirt design that quickly. Okay, um, you know, and I li I'm liking how the M is above the O, it's above the base. This is the baseline where the, these letters are sitting. So I'm dropping it down, just kind of exaggerate. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this E. I'm gonna enlarge that a little bit. And I'm gonna drop that down a little bit below the baseline. Now everything kind of moved over. So I'm gonna pull that back this way so that P is out of the way. Pull that X in a little bit more, a couple clicks. And then I'm gonna look at it. Not too bad. Um, I'm gonna just kind of go with this and play. Um, ultimately, I'll, I will probably get into playing with the idea of colors. Um, you know, and this could be um, easily a logo for travel agency, right? Explore more, you know, and then there's going to be the word, you know, I mean, could be just that or a lot of times you're going to put, you know, see if I spelled that right. We're gonna scale that down, of course, to make that fit in there. You know, and that might just kind of tuck in here. So it's kind of a secondary element. I don't want it to stand out, but I can. I can make this simply explore more. And then if I change this agency, again, think about things that will make it stand out. You know, something like color. Boom, nice black and red, perfect, always go together. Um, you know, beautiful colors. And again, remember we have this idea of the color themes that we can kind of pull up. Don't forget that is the way of kind of doing things. And you can just go explore, um, you know, and you could type in the word black and you're gonna get things that are using the black. Um, so here's that red black combination, okay? Um, or maybe something else. That's a nice, that's a pretty orange. All right, so we've clicked on that. We click this. Now we're into that kind of orangey brown type of thing. Something like white or yellow here, you got to be cautious of um, because, <clears throat> again, that yellow works great on a dark color. On the white, it kind of works, but it's going to get lost pretty easily. So you probably want to, if you're in a light background, you want to do something like that, but also think, um, you know, how can I work with this in an alternative way, right? So I'm just gonna copy everything down here and I'm gonna put a box around it. I'm just gonna do a rectangle. I just wanna see what, how's it look reversed out? How's it look if I do it something different? So object, arrange, I'm gonna send that to the back. Now there's that word down here I know of, I'm gonna make that something like that uh, and I'm going to click on those and we're in the same color palette so I'm looking at that same thing how does that look on a dark color okay you know this is not dark dark but let's say I make that uh, that dark black 
that. Again, I'm just using my ink drop um, to select my colors here. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of like a black, blue, gray almost. Um, let me, I'm double clicking. I just want to see where it is. Yeah, see, so we're in the blues with the gray kind of down here. Um, and again, so that just kind of gives you an idea how will this work? Um, because remember, when we're working with logos, they're not always going to be on white, right? I mean, in the old days, it was always on a white piece of stationery. Um, you know, maybe there was a sign outside the building, uh, but that was about it, right? We didn't use the logo a bazillion times. Now we're using it all the time um, in many different ways. So it may be you want to work at, up in an alternative, the light version and the dark version, right? Because this, this could easily be like this on a, um, uh, a website, or you could put this on top of a photograph. Uh, and again, this is kind of, you know, just working through um, the logo, working through the letter form. So we have it in this case, the black version, um, or so dark with a light background, uh, dark background with a light version. Okay. Um, and it still doesn't mean you can't do things like, you know, make that thing red. Maybe that works. Um, I don't know, right? But it's again going through and kind of working things out. Um, and playing with combinations. Questions on that? Does that make any sense, guys? Makes sense to me. Okay. <clears throat> like I, said, I, I asked because I, when we're, if we were in class, I can see your heads, I can see you bobbing. You know, with this, it's hard to see. Um, all right, so keep working on those. I think that's going to be <clears throat> um, something that you guys can do. Um, and again, just kind of look at those letter forms and kind of explore how they work in conjunction with each other. Um, look at the spacing, okay? The tracking, meaning how far apart the letters are. Um, you know, look at the letting. Right, I mean, how close are, is the bottom from one line to the next here? I made it pretty close. I wanna kind of create that connection. Um, would I write out a whole book like this? No way, right, this is crazy. But, excuse me, for a, um, you know, a, a logo, you definitely would take the time to do it something like this. Okay. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, all right, any questions, any other questions on the project? We're gonna, we're gonna start <clears throat> going into the next part, which is gonna be a poster. We'll start that on Thursday. Um, but I wanna give you guys time to keep working on your logos. But I have something else to go over. So I just wanna ask if there's any questions before we continue on changing the subject. Everybody good with the logo and such? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, all right, so I want to take a few moments to um, talk about um, social media, social marketing, um, all those kind of things that we were doing today. Um, so who, uh, can I make the fair assumption everybody's on Instagram? Anybody, I want to put it this way. Anybody yeah. not on Instagram? Me, as embarrassing Me. as it might sound. Embarrassing. All right, well, we're going to get you there. <laughs> um, and, and the reason I say Instagram, there's, I mean, obviously there's Facebook, um, there's Twitter. And, and as, a, as an artist designer, you should start to use all of them. Um, but I, I think for, for us as visual people, as designers, as artists, um, uh, photographers, I think Instagram is kind of, um, for me, the place. Um, uh, it, it, we can, again, the picture is worth a thousand words, they say, and we're, and we're able to kind of, um, you know, put out information quickly um, and, and start to build a following and um, be, be able to kind of um, build something up. So I want to go through, I'm going to go through an example um, real quick of, a, of an old, of a past student of mine and, um, and what he did and kind of 
made his kind of, I don't want to say his fortune, but you know, made his name in Instagram. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I do on Instagram with my National Park Geek site and, and how I've gotten that up to uh, the levels that I'm at now. Um, so let me just see if I can get this up here. Let me do this. Let me just search here. Okay. So this is an old uh, past student of mine, Tommy Perez. Uh, <clears throat> let me just kind of go through his story um, as to, to what he is and what he's about. Um, so Tommy was a student of mine, I'm going to say eight, 10 years ago. I'm just going to say it's 10 years, something like that. And um, always a good student and, um, you know, never um, always wanted to go out and, and go get it. Um, always a, a good designer, well thought out projects and such. Um, he graduated from college and started working for Bear Paints um, down in Costa Mesa. And he was just working there as a graphic designer doing work for brochures and you know labels for the paint cans and and those kind of items um and and he was married and he had a they had a kid um and they decided that you know his wife had had a, a job where she had more opportunities um and it, he wanted to stay home with the kid so he stayed home with their their and that this time her their first kid zoe and um was working freelance, just kind of working things on the side here and there. And, and as a project, um, and we'll call it a personal project because I think a lot of these things that we're seeing came out of personal projects. The idea, let me start something and see where it takes me. Um, he started out with these, this personal project um, with a, a thing called uh, A to Z uh, or A to Zoe. Let me see if I can get this up. I'm looking for it on his um, website. So again, what, what's on his website, you'll find also on his um, Instagram. Let me see, it should be down here, it is. A to Zoe. So as a project to do with his daughter to kind of keep him creative and keep him busy, uh, he started this project and he was posting on Instagram. So as he says, she was two at the time and he was trying to teach her the alphabet. And what they would do is um, for each letter, um, he would come up with some kind of food. I don't know, A is for apple or C is for cookie. Um, and he would craft that food letter, um, craft that food letter where we create the A or create the, the C. And then always in there with his daughter's hand, Zoe. Let me see my... Internet is being slow here. Okay, so here it is coming in. So here's B for bacon, right? And he took the little bacon chips and made a B. And again, he was always playing with topography and he was always um, making that picture C for cookie. Uh, D for dots, the candies, E for egg. And was always kind of doing it. And it just started as an Instagram project and it started to get traction. It started to get noticed. Um, so again, he was using Instagram as a way to kind of communicate what he was capable of doing. Kind of think of it as a portfolio. Um, and many artists, designers use Instagram as their portfolio or part of their portfolio. And that's something you guys can do right now. You can start to put work out there. Um, so he came up with this kind of a little catchy thing and, and Zoe's hand was there and he just went through the whole entire alphabet. Uh, maybe he did one a week, whatever it happened to be. Um, and he worked it up. And again, it got traction, it got noticed. And then he was also into the idea of uh, um, paper craft. And, and this is where it really took off for him. So he started creating things out of paper. Um, and since then, he's worked with Target and Nickelodeon, and, and he did a, he did actually worked at Facebook for a little bit. Um, and again, that came out of uh, his Instagram stuff. That got his job there. Um, did some stuff for for McDonald's, um, Ford, 
Okay, so I mean, like the Brazilian big companies, um, he's still working on his own as a freelancer. Um, like I said, he went from uh, working at Bear Paint to freelancing. Then he worked a little while at, at um, Facebook and he's done some time at, at um, Target, but that was more of a freelance basis. Um, and it just kind of keeps going. So like here is a, a gift card for Target. Okay, so when it's printed, it looks like this, but in reality, it's all made out of paper and they photographed it. So there's a dimension that comes out in his photograph. Could he do this with Illustrator? Yeah, he could. Um, but he ends up crafting these things uh, and, and they're just mind blowing. Um, and then he animates them. Okay, so a lot of them he has animation going on with it. So we'll do, you know, this was just kind of a personal project he did. Um, see if this will load up. So again, think everything you see here is paper guys. Let's take a look at this and watch. So he, what he's doing is stop animation. He's taking a picture, moving, picture, move, picture, move. Okay. And if we zoom down, you can kind of see what he built, right? So he built all of this out of paper to make this. And then he'll go back into Photoshop and you know, clean up the wire and get all that kind of stuff out of, out of the picture. Um, and he's been doing this, like I said, for a, a time now. And, and, and he's, you know, kind of become the paper craft guy type of thing. And, and it's, it's gorgeous stuff. And, and when you see it real life, it's amazing. Um, he did a talk a couple of years ago down in uh, Santa Ana that I went to. Um, and he had, had some of the things there and it was just amazing. I'm looking for his, um, he did a back to school week last year for Target. I'm trying to see if I see it here. Yes, yeah, this, this is it. I think so. No, that's something else. Um, so, but he did all this. What I'm trying to get to is all of this came out of kind of a personal project, out of his out of his own kind of desire to one be creative and two kind of share the world, um, share to the world the stuff that he's doing. And um, it, because he put the stuff up on Instagram and his website, of course, it has is, is led to jobs, multiple jobs doing this stuff. Um, really cool stuff. This is the one they did. So these were all in the store um, and they're big, right? This like this flamingo, the thing was like, you know, six foot tall. So it was all paper crafted. So he made them out of paper initially and then they remade them large and they put them up as displays in the store. Um, and it was, it was quite amazing to see. Um, you know, and, and I walked into the store, I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's uh, you know, his stuff, right? It was all oh, that's Tommy's stuff in my target, right? You could see it and it was nationwide type of thing. So um, it's quite amazing. Like I said, he started with just the paperwork and then he went into stop, stop motion animation with it. Um, did a thing for Time Magazine. Um, he's always doing something new and cool. Uh, Clorox, um, AARP, New Balance, um, just fascinating. And again, everything you see here, guys, on this stuff, it's all made out of paper. Um, it's nuts. Like I said, it's not, it's not computer generated. It's, he physically sit, sits there and makes them all up. Um, but again, it kind of came out of uh, putting it out there on, on Instagram. So if we go to his Instagram, back to it, uh, oops. you can see the stuff here, right? So he's putting things out on a fairly regular basis, um, updating to try to be current and, you know, putting the work out there. And the vast majority of this is um, his work. Occasionally there'll be a, some kind of family thing or something like that. Um, but Instagram has basically become his portfolio. So let's take a look at one of the posts um, to kind of see what how he's doing it. So 
when you're working something like Instagram, obviously you got to have a picture. Um, and I will tell you this, there's two ways of, of, of building an Instagram following. One is to kind of figure out what you want. Do, am I making a, a Instagram that's just me and more or less kind of a portfolio um, showing my work and my life? Okay, and it's perfectly fine to do this, right? We People want to see who you are. They want to see that you're an interesting person or, or not interesting person, whatever. They want to see who you are. So it's perfectly fine to um, share you know, pictures of what you're doing and what you've done and, you know, the birthday party you went to. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, obviously, don't be putting up embarrassing pictures. Um, so you, you've got the image and then you've got to have some kind of write-up um, and then you need to have some kind of tags. Now, he doesn't have a lot of tags here, um, but with Instagram, you're allowed to have up to 30 hashtags. Uh, and really, hashtags are how people are going to find your your, your work. Um, they may find it because they're following you or somebody tagged you in something, but for the most part, um, hashtags are how people are gonna find you. So they were look, somebody looked at illustration or paper craft, and those are gonna be ways that you're gonna start to see um, people that are in that area. Okay, so um, hashtags are really the key to finding, we're allowing people to find you. Um, as an audience. Um, so hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. They can be in the same um, original block that you're typing. Some people do it separate. Your choice, it makes no difference. Okay, so it makes no difference here. Um, and even when you look at it on a phone now, let's pull that up here. So even, I'm looking at the phone fast. Let me see if I can pull this up on. I used to be able to use QuickTime to capture your phone. Let me see. Um, Give me one sec. Yeah, right now, Aaron, it's, it is, it's amazing. His stuff is just um, incredible, incredible how he did it. Um, now that's me. I don't know what I look like. Looking good, Danny. Awesome, right? <laughs> I should have did it before. There's a way you could I could look at my phone through the, but I don't know with the zoom going, it might get all whacked out. Anyway, um, when people see your posts, especially on Instagram, um, on the digital media, which 90% of people are looking at it that way, um, they're only seeing like one line. Okay, so I know that's kind of weird on the screen. There, it's kind of a little bit better there. They're only seeing like the first line and a half or two lines. So don't worry about this and don't worry about putting this on a second one. You can put it all in one post. I do that, it makes no difference, okay? Um, but again, it's about sharing stuff. Now, and you should do it on a regular basis. Let me just see when he's done last. He did six days ago. To me, that's a little bit too long. I, I post every day um, with my National Park Geek site. I do it probably about three to four posts a day um, to keep it coming up, right? Because if I don't post, I, I will go away from the feed, okay? So the more you post, the more people like it, um, or the more that person likes your post, the more likely you're going to show up in their feed um, the next time they come into Instagram, okay? So there is kind of an art behind it, meaning you want to post on a regular basis. Um, you want to use the hashtags. Um, 
and, and um, you know, again, be responsive to people when they, they comment and tag as much as you can. So one way of doing Instagram is doing your own work, meaning you put up your own work, your illustrations. Um, it doesn't need to be completed work. It could be sketches. It could be things moving up to things. It could be a beautiful picture, a beautiful sunset you call today. Another way is to kind of do a conglomerate site where you're reposting other things. Um, and let me, um, so we're just gonna type in, I'm just gonna do a type in, I'm just Googling. Uh, so, Again, this looks like a conglomerate site where they're getting work from other people. So even somebody, um, Stefan Sagmeister, he's a well-known graphic designer, um, has his own work in New York. He's from Aust Aust Austria, um, great guy, funny guy. Um, I met him a couple of times. Um, and he does a lot of great work and you can look at his website and, and see it. But what he's doing things like 90% of this work you're starting to see now is coming from people that follow him and he'll post it and he'll make a comment about it. So this comes from Jose um, in Berlin and he wrote this and then he puts in a little comment about it, whether he likes it, doesn't like it, whatever. Um, so he's kind of made this website where it's not all his work. Okay, he's, he's known enough that you can find his work, but what he's doing is kind of a service and he's reposting things and giving uh, comments from people that have emailed him. Um, many websites like my National Park Geek one, I have it set if you have a hashtag, uh, hashtag National Park Geek, so I can start to look at um, your pictures and, and see them and then decide which ones I want to um, post. Uh, as you know how to okay how do you show the iphone oh you go to quicktime yes uh -huh. and then new or file new movie recording new movie recording okay yeah and then the oh, arrow next to the it, oh yeah it came up how did it come up this time last time it didn't come up you're smart okay so um so as you see here it, the more, right? We see the more, um, it's not showing you everything, but if I unclick, there's more that's written. And then I have a series of hashtags and such um, below. Okay, so um, don't worry about making them separate, but you wanna get the hashtags in. That's how people find you. So if I do um, like National Park Geek hashtag, there's 778,000 times people have tagged it. Now, again, some of them are mine, of course, but this is how I get what I'm going to post for today. So I'll go through and just kind of see, now this is somebody else just kind of posting stuff. Some of them um, are, I guess, just re reposters, kind of like me, um, but I don't know why they're doing it. I'm doing it because it's my business. Um, and I'll go through and like, okay? And when I see, you know, one that I want, um, you know, so I go through and I used to go through and be able to get everything, but now there's so many. Um, so again, five years, five plus years ago when I started this, um, there were no hashtag. Now there's you know three quarters of a million. So right, this is a beautiful picture. So I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna click the little black tag there and then I can come back um, and look at my saved images and go back through. And then I can select those uh, for reposting later, right? So, and then I use an app, a repost app. Um, you know, so it's like here and I copy the link. Kind of weird watching it without. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna unbookmark it so I don't repost it later. And this is just an app that you can get. Um, some are free, some you pay a dollar or two to get maybe a watermark off. I'm not sure what I did for this one. Um, and then you'll post into your feed. Type something. 
always make sure if you're posting someone else's work um, as a common courtesy and something you should do is, is um, always thank the person. Okay. So always give them thanks. Don't ever try to um, say it's yours because you get way you'll get in trouble um, and, and you're going to create all kinds of issues. Okay. And that's not something you want to do, right? You want to be kind of upfront, um, let people trust you um, as a, a poster, if that's what you're doing. Um, and it's okay that even if you're, you're doing the vast, the vast majority of the posts um, are your own, it's totally fine to come back in later and, and, and occasionally do a repost. Um, I can tell you people love getting reposted. Um, I do, I get reposted by like channel seven news or something like that. And it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so this I think was White Sands. Just double check, it's White Sands. Um, so I work with a, um, a nonprofit that sells my products in their park. So I always like to kind of call them out. Give me one second. Now it says I'm giving a warning, only 30 hashtags are available. So at that point, that means that person had too many hashtags and that's okay. If they have hashtags, I kind of leave them in usually because <clears throat> they're gonna use different hashtags than I would post. Um, but I always make sure again, my hashtag is in there, National Park Geek because um, that's my brand. Um, and I'm gonna copy them because I wanna tag them in the picture, not just put them in the, the verbiage. Um, and a lot of this just to become a second nature to you once you start to do it. Um, but it's a way of kind of getting the um, world to kind of notice you. Okay, and um, it truly can work. Um, there's, uh, there's people that want to be seen. There's people that want to see new things. There's people that want to be inspired. And my, my goal with my National Park Geek Instagram is to um, inspire the viewer just for a little microsecond, right? And we're all living these crazy days, it's nuts. Um, but if I can take you away for a second or two um, to someplace else, get your mind off of the nuts, the craziness that we're all going through all the time, whether we had COVID or not, we're all going through this craziness. Um, that's a good thing. That, I think that's a good thing. So hashtag, 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 um, and, and, and post on a regular basis on my personal account, um, which is just Daniel Gross. Um, I post once a day, sometimes two, but 90% of the time it's just one. Um, and even there, I'm posting pictures that I've taken, uh, mostly national park site stuff and that I've taken that are on my phone. I'll go through my phone every day and kind of like revisit a vacation and kind of take a picture and repost it. Um, Let me just finish this up. And then I'm gonna tag location in here in this case, because it's um, park, boom. And I'm gonna share and then loading up and we're off. So um, anybody wanna make a guess? We'll, we'll look at this in 30 minutes. Anybody wanna make a guess of how many follows, how many likes we'll have in 30 minutes or less, we'll have less. Okay, it's going to blow up, right? I can tell you, I, I know a lot of how these things go. So as you can see, I've got um, 659,000 followers. We're almost to, um, so we're a few hundred away, about 700, 800, 700 away roughly from 660,000 followers. Um, again, it started it with zero, right guys? So what I'm trying to show you is um, you can do this. <clears throat> now my personal account's got like 2000 followers because I'm not trying to bump it up, but here you can. Um, to show you what is available, it's kind of crazy. Um, last week I had 6.6 .6 million impressions. That means 6.6 .6 million times 
people saw the photos that I posted. Okay. Um, so you can make this thing happen. Um, again, I'm running this as a business, but you know, there's no reason you can't do this for yourself. Um, now my personal account is, um, as you see, 2000 followers. And I just post a picture a day. Occasionally I'll put the wife and kid in there. Uh, but most of these are just pictures I've taken along the way. Um, but you know, you gotta put in the birthday and those kind of things. Um, people like that, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's about, for me, this is kind of my little art project. Every day I kind of go through and I post a picture. 99% of them are old, right? The day I got a second COVID shot, of course I post it, right? And by the way, if you get a chance, go take the COVID shot, guys. Um, again, they're going to become more prevalent. Hopefully in the next month, everybody's going to be accessible with it. Um, but, you know, so this content is here. I'm not trying to build this up. It's, it's more of a personal project for me. Um, if somebody wants to follow, they can. Uh, but I, I'm not trying to make this into something. Um, I'm not showing my work. And in fact, the link on my website um, goes to my National Park Beach site, not even my personal site for which you guys go. So um, overview, yeah, so I have 3,800 impressions in a week here, right? So quite a difference between, you know, a couple million and 3,000. So obviously I'm not trying to monetize this one up like, like this one. Um, you know, and in this one, I have things, links to a shop, to my products that I'm selling, uh, my, you know, my designs. Um, I'm linking to my website. Um, and I'm linking also again to the, the hashtag that I want people to use so I can start to see and find their pictures, um, which allows me to repost. Right? That makes sense. So I'm getting 90.9.99% of these pictures that you're going to see in here are coming from people that follow, okay? And I just kind of curate it um, and try to keep it posted upon what might be going on or what I feel like today is, or, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, Wednesday and it's Waterfall Wednesday or something like that, you know? So I'll do those kind of items there. Um, so again, there's, you know, two ways. One is just your work. The second is working with, um, you know, reposting stuff. Um, where the restaurants are starting to dine in again. Yeah. Um, awesome. You got somebody got fully vaccinated. Cool. You guys really should do it, right? You keep wearing a mask. Don't, you know, it's like, it's it just keep it on for now. It's no big deal. Um, but yeah, once we all get vaccinated, we can get back to some kind of normalcy. Um, but you can see this kind of reposting. Um, that's done all the time. Maybe, you know, you look up your favorite little coffee shop or restaurant, as we're thinking of, um, you know, I'm sure they probably hopefully have a hashtag and people are looking, um, and they're looking to repost those pictures and people like that. Um, other ways that people can do it is people direct message or, or tag me in a picture. So these have all got the little tags and you'll, we'll click on here and you see these are tags that people, this person, tagged all of these people in the picture uh, with, again, with hopes of us looking at it and, and saving it or posting it, that type of thing. Um, so again, there's a couple of ways that you can communicate with um, people. The last way you can communicate actually through here is through um, direct messaging, right? So people can send me messages through here and I can go through and see their picture and or what they're they're talking about um, and if they have questions. So it, it's a, Instagram is a great way for us as visuals to um, share <clears throat> information, not only our own work, but um, you know, work from somebody else, okay? And it doesn't have to all come through there. So um, it's an awesome way of doing it, guys. Like I said, this is um, quite a way to go. Um, and again, Tommy only has 34,000 followers, I say only, that's a great number, right? Because it's this is him and his website. Um, I wish I had 34,000 on my personal website, but I don't, but I'm not trying to market it, but you can. Um, and he has found success through his art and design. And, and you should be starting to follow artists and designers through Instagram um, as a way to start to see the work. People post a lot more on Instagram than they do on Facebook. Um, 
How many of you guys are still on Facebook? I am. One, anybody else? Yeah. Couple, so. right? I mean, it's like Instagram, I mean, Facebook's kind of there. People go a little bit. Um, I mean, the only reason I started was my sister was on it. I post stuff on, on um, because Instagram's owned by Facebook, it's easy. Um, when I post on Instagram, I also have it post on my Facebook, uh, but I don't go in there. Very seldom you're gonna see me writing or typing or doing anything. Um, it's not that it's not used, of course, but you know, you only have so much time in the day and I'd rather put my focus to me on Instagram because that's where um, I'm, I'm finding success, okay? Um, but post, don't be afraid. Um, on Twitter, yeah, I'm on Twitter too, but I, Twitter's more about like a little bit of news. I try to get some more news things in there. Um, I'll do more reposting of like, from in this case, park sites and stuff like that than I do on the, the, the Instagram coming directly from things. Um, but don't be afraid to do it, guys. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is you can do it. I started with zero and now I'm at 600,000. So hashtagging uh, get you more totally. followers? Totally. Um, okay, I got it. But, then, but what you also want to do is look at those hashtags and go and like their pictures, right? So let, let's say um, I'm going to look at the, the hashtag that people tag me. I'm just going to pick a random picture. So they tag me here, and they want me to kind of look at their pictures, right? Um, this one I posted. This is crazy, right? Um, this one did how many thousand likes? I can't even tell there. Hold on, let me look at it on the phone. Did the phone come back up? Here we go. I posted this on Sunday because of, of the leap, right? 34,000 likes. Okay. Um, what really blew me away was it had 1.1 <clears throat> 1 .1 million reach, meaning it, it was. It was 1.2 million impressions. Um, people saw this picture 1.2 million times. It's like the power you have here, it's crazy, guys. Um, but I, again, I started with zero, um, like everybody else. I was the first one to follow myself. Um, but when you go through the hashtags, um, I'm just going to pick one um, protect public lands. It's only 24,000 pictures here with this. Probably half of them are mine because <clears throat> I use that hashtag a lot. Um, but what you can do is go through, and and this person here wrote that hashtag into their thing here, right? So there's a hashtag protect public land, um, and I can go through and like. So it's another way that um, you can start to gain followers, right? Because if you like pictures, we all know what people do, right? We we go back here. And let me go back to my home, check your little hearts, right? And we're gonna go, who, who liked your picture, right? And you're gonna go, well, who is that? Well, who's that following me? Okay, and this is how you build it up, okay? At some point it becomes self-generating. I, you know, I get, I don't know, a couple thousand a week new followers. Um, and it's just become this machine at this point. It's doing it by itself, uh, but, you know, you can go through and start to go, okay, who, who was that person, right? And go through, well, who are they? Okay, they, oh, they follow you, but you're not following them back, it's private. But you can start to go through and see who they are. And you're like, oh, I like their work. And then you're gonna follow them. Okay, so not only will you gain new people by looking at hashtags, they will see them too, okay? <clears throat> and they will see that you like their picture. And that's how you found them because of a hashtag. That makes sense because there's there's no other way you would find um, many of these pictures if they hadn't hashtag. So these are all just people that have tagged National Park Geek. There'd be no way for me to know or find these. Um, and at this point, <clears throat> some of the pictures, they're not even meant for me. They're just using the hashtag because it's become popular. So this is somebody here. Um, this is somebody selling something. Okay, and again, they're just using the hashtag. So I'm finding it under like other businesses are starting to use it, um, which to me is kind of honor. I like it that, that, you know, some big company thinks that using the hashtag 
you know, is good. Here's create that was, let's go back. This is an organization I, I, I've worked with the Creative Action Network. Um, you know, so they're using a the hashtag because they know it's park related and they know a lot of park related things come through uh, with the um, National Park Geek hashtag. Okay, so um, hashtags really are the key, the main key. That's kind of the hidden secret as to how something becomes successful is when people use hashtags and people start to use the hashtags. And once you start using hashtags, um, dude, it makes your world a whole lot different, right? So you can look up hashtags, um, go through something and, and find, um, so let me just do hashtag Fullerton. So there's 950,000 hashtag to Fullerton College. Look at that, you guys. You guys, people tag y'all. So 91,000 pictures have been posted with the hashtag Fullerton College. Now, do they all have something to do with college? Maybe, you know, I mean, some of these look like maybe it's a restaurant. The foe of me, um, is that near campus? It must be, right? But Fullerton College, Fullerton, CSU Fullerton, they're tagging all the cities and such, but it's a restaurant. Um, and then you're gonna have things here that's coming from Fullerton College itself, okay? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> It's a great way to kind of find things. And you're able to find, you know, a classmate or so that's on here because they tagged Fullerton College. Um, so, you know, what Snail's got to do with Fullerton College? I don't know, right? But it's Sunny's Nails. It looks like she's got a, a nail salon somewhere near Fullerton Brea, Placentia, someplace. I don't know. Um, so they're using it for marketing. But, you know, people are using it for other things of just, you know, share in the world, okay, or a restaurant or something that happens on campus, you know, they're using that, that hashtag. Okay, so you have scholarship opportunities, guys. Look now, you get some free money. Good till April 11th, so get on that. So hashtags, hashtags, hashtags are the way to find things and look up new things um, with it, okay? Um, but post, comment, like, all those things are good for you, okay? If you want to build up your audience. Um, again, I'm, 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 I'm working on obviously the National Park Geek side. Um, the other thing are stories, right? You can post stories in your site. Um, I think I have one up on. So this is one I have yesterday. I'm working on a podcast. Um, so I've got this guy uh, named Rob. He's a naval avi naval aviator. He flies planes. Um, right now he's kind of working desk work, but, but he's up in Seattle area. He's, he's flown planes on the aircraft carriers, crazy stuff. And um, he does podcasts. So he, he and I are working together to make a podcast. He's in Yellowstone now interviewing some people about wolves. Um, so we're going to use that later. So I, we made a story post and this has got 25,000 likes. And this is the second one with some video of the wolves themselves, 17,000. Um, so stories are things that you put up. They're basically there for a day. You can click and you can add new things. Um, and then you can add in, um, you can save stories, right? So you can save certain ones. So um, let me see if that'll pop up on the computer here. So this is uh, Channel Islands. So I'm just kind of clicking through. So you can save, in this case, I made these little stories up on a trip to Channel Islands National Park, and then I could save it and people can look at them later. Okay, so you can, yeah, that's what these stories are, story posts. Um, so you'll see these on companies, many people do like icons and stuff like that. You can draw those, I just never got to it yet. Um, but I'm just kind of like posting things there. So if I had something interesting in my uh, Instagram story, 
I might make a new one here. And I, I probably will. I'll start one for um, upcoming podcast type of thing just to kind of keep the word going on that as I, as I build the empire up. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's really, like I said, it's probably the way. And the cool thing is it costs you zero dollars, guys. This costs you nothing to get going. All right. There's no investment. It's only time. Um, all you got to do is just kind of put the time in the, and the effort into making it work um, and, and doing it on a regular basis. Okay. And don't worry about being perfect. Okay. And don't worry about the likes. Okay. Yes. I get posts that, that have 20, 30,000 likes and I got posts that have a couple thousand. It doesn't matter. It's about telling the story and getting the information out there. So whether it's your photos, your drawings, your illustrations, your work in progress, uh, what you had for dinner, it doesn't matter. Get it out there. Just start getting into it. You can transform this. Um, you can come back and delete things later if you need to. Don't worry about it. But um, it's about telling that story, okay? Um, and you know, and I have people that obviously follow and, and comment and, and thank me, and I appreciate that. Um, but it's also a way that I'm able to get the brand out there. So next time they're at the National Park Store um, or they go to my website. They're, they're likely to buy a patch or a sticker or a t-shirt type of thing. Um, so um, this is a way that you can do this, guys. Um, you know, it's, and it's many times you hear this term jab, jab, right hook. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book about it. Um, he's a huge on social media um, and, and other things. And the idea was give, 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 ask. Give, 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 ask. So it's like give, give them good content, give them good stories, give them stuff. And then every now and then ask, say, hey, buy my book, okay? Buy my sticker, buy my t-shirt, um, you know, buy my print, buy my photograph, okay? You can do this, guys. Um, and, and really, um, we'll get into a little bit more um, in a later class on, you know, how, to, how, do you, how do you make stickers, right? I mean, how do you, how do, you do this and get these made um, and then sell them, okay? I sell them and I'm literally, I'm putting them into an envelope sending it off in the mail today, okay? Nothing complicated. If it's more complicated to have bigger envelopes, if it's a bigger product to have different envelopes. So um, you can do this and we'll get into that kind of idea and products and things that you can do right now to make a little side money, maybe it builds into a business, um, but just kind of get it out there and start it and don't worry about it, okay? Don't, don't think it, don't wait for perfection. Okay, too many people wait until it's perfect. Well, nothing's ever perfect. So um, I think Instagram's a great place to go and try and experiment. Um, and again, if you don't like something, you can come back and delete it later. Don't sweat it, guys. Um, it's, it's not the end of the world here. Uh, and don't be embarrassed. Um, people wanna see process. Uh, people wanna see what you're doing. People like to see what you're thinking. Um, people like to see a beautiful sunset. I hate to tell you, People like to see pretty pictures and that's all this is, okay? I built a brand out of pretty pictures, okay? Um, telling little stories at a time, um, being able to kind of capture you for one microsecond and take your mind off the world and go, wow, that's beautiful, I'd like to go there, you know? Or that's, you know, just fabulous. Um, or I remember when I went there, right? Or that's a great picture. I love the angle. I love the light. So you can look at these from many different ways. Um, and that's what I want. I want the people to be able to explore, you know, um, and not get bent out on something. This is just pictures of a small little park in Arizona between Phoenix and the Grand Canyon. It's called Tuzi Gut. It's a uh, old Indian ruins, Native American uh, ruins. And it's really awesome. And they have this incredible history of, of, of the people that have occupied these lands for thousands of years, you know, and it's got 5,000 likes. You know, it doesn't need to be this, you know, grandiose picture, you know, like here, that's got 9,000, okay? Don't worry about the likes, just kind of go, here's 4,000. Um, you know, and I know I can guarantee you, if you go back through this, again, I post every day, so about three a day, um, but if you go back a year or more or two, uh, you're gonna get pictures that get like hardly anything. And that's okay. Um, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the likes. Okay, that'll come. Okay, but put the pictures up, put the images up. Um, don't, don't worry about it. Occasionally I'll post, this is one of mine. 
occasionally I'll put my own picture in just to see what I'm doing. Um, but the vast majority of the time it's others, right? I'm, I'm trying to, to share the story of others. Um, this is an organization I'm working a little bit with or a nonprofit, um, you know, and they're doing uh, internships and they're working with minorities and uh, women. And um, you know, it's a great, great organization trying to get people outdoors. And you know, it's got a thousand likes, I don't care. Right, I didn't, it's not like I put the picture up for the likes, I put it up to get the information out there. Um, and I know people have seen it and that's really what's most important, okay? Yes, I love a beautiful picture as much as everybody else, um, but a lot, sometimes you just gotta tell the story and get that out there. Um, but again, all of this is coming from other people. Um, and as a photographer myself, I look at it, I get inspired. I look at like new angles or new ways of doing things. Um, sometimes it's a place I've been and I'm like, okay, I can't wait till I get back and I can shoot the same kind of way. Um, you know, and then I work with something like this. I'm working with, a, I work with Eyewitness Books, um, DK Books um, to do a giveaway. They approached me and said, hey, we'd like to do a little thing with you. You know, and again, this is an international company that's coming to me and we're doing a little co-branding, co-marketing kind of thing. Um, so there's definite benefits of all this. Um, at the very least, you're sharing a picture, you're brightening somebody's world, hopefully, um, you know, and, and you're getting stuff out there. As artists, as creatives, this is what we do. Um, <clears throat> it was next impossible to do this 10 years ago. You couldn't do it. I could not reach a million people um, on my own. I, okay, I would have to go through agencies and do other things to even get to half that number. Today, right now, I make a picture, I make a post, I am reaching potentially 600,000 followers, 660,000 followers, okay? Um, and I paid nothing. There was, there's never been any pay for followers or likes or any of that stuff. Um, it's all organic. So I'm saying you can do this, guys. I mean, if you have specific questions about stuff, let me know. We can chit chat and talk about it. Um, and I'm more than willing to um, share what I'm doing, okay? Um, I'm a teacher, I share. That's what we do. All right, so I'm gonna stop the share for now. Any questions, guys? Uh, do you have a photography class that you teach? I do not. <clears throat> I'm, only, I'm only teaching this one. Um, I wouldn't be opposed if they had an opening or something like that. Mm. Not at some point, but most of the time they have the guys that have photography degrees. I'm just kind of self-taught. Ah. I'm, I'm the better kind of photographer. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna you know what? We'll do we'll do a class on photography. We'll do it like a like this. Just I did a class on Instagram. We'll do one on photography. Let me write it down. Hey, I'll give you my tips, and that'd be like you get a whole semester's worth in one day. It'd be awesome. Yeah. So it's cool stuff. <laughs> um, I sent my. I uh, travel agency icons on the chat here. Okay. Have a look, see. It's a screenshot, so. <laughs> okay, let me get my Instagram back up here. The zoom rather. One second. I'm trying to get it downloaded here. I have to say, I'm a little less experienced with making uh, graphic uh, <laughs> graphic icons than I am with uh, using Photoshop. <laughs> it's okay, that's why we're all here. If we all know how to do it, we wouldn't have to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting a download now. Oh, is it okay if I leave uh, 10 minutes early? Because I- We're gonna be done in two minutes, so sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> How's that? All right. Let me just- I'm just going to get your thing open so I can look at it. Uh, it's not opening. A little screenshot. 
Hopefully it's the right one. Click to open. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, yeah, but we're getting there, right? We got mm -hmm. rid of the flag. We're going to this. Let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see your logos there, I hope. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think these are working better, these, these ovals over here. Mm -hmm. um, the type the is getting a little lost because it's white on this light blue, so maybe a little bit darker type there, top, potentially. Um, I don't know if you need a boat, because we all, if you have the word cruises, we know it's a boat. All right. Makes sense. So maybe the idea of the islands kind of thing would work better. Um, and obviously, if you're based in the Philippines, putting the word Philippines there is no problem at all. Um, you know, so maybe that becomes one of these two. Um, maybe the, the yellow sun's a little bit much up there. But, you know, so maybe it's this kind of middle one um, and work that up. Maybe think about, if, do I want a border or no border on this? Um, do I want any kind of, you know, do I want the whole island to be green? Okay, mm. you, know, you can play with those kind of ideas um, to work it out. But yeah, I think it's headed in a nice direction. Now keep going. All right, all right. Next and time. you could take mine, Professor? Yes. Um, who was that to say? Wait, wait, so is this how you're supposed to do it? Let me get that back on. Let me get my. Well, it's one way. <laughs> who was it? That's... Oh, it was me. So. So, like what he showed us about the, uh, you know, labels and shapes, is that what we're supposed to do? Like this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's working it up. Let me have somebody sent me. Perfect. All right. So, here's one here. Uh, like, look at this, right? This is a logo. Very nicely done. This is the JPEX Travel. Um, okay, like Japan, like Apex. Yeah, it's nice. You did a nice job. I would move Thank this, you. move this, move this globe up a little bit because it's getting a little close to the T. Not a lot, just a little bit. So I don't, I don't want to feel like it's touching it, but I want to okay. just a little bit. But nicely done, right? And we got the Mount Fuji. I mean, it's just you look at it and go, wow, that's cool. That's the paper airplane on the bottom. Yes. Um, Things you could play with is maybe the paper airplane, maybe part of it, the wing comes off a little bit, breaks the plane. Cut the point could come out here a little bit, and maybe the bottom down here a little bit just kind of breaks that circle. I don't know, think about it, that might work. Um, or it's maybe it's bringing it in so it's not touching the edges, so it doesn't okay. feel so much like a reflection. At first, it feels like a reflection of the of the mountain. No, but leg, that's what I'm trying to depict. Okay. It's like cool. the mountain, the triangle, uh, triangular shape of the mountain, the Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought it was Fuji right as soon as I saw it. Um, look at the letters down here. See like the space between the E and this P. It feels like there's too big a gap here. It's, okay. Right. So just look at the spacing between the letters, um, kind of balance that out a little bit, but really nicely done. Thank um, you. And then Lance, you did one, I think you sent a revision. Let me see if I can get that up here. Um, so this is due this Thursday, right? Yeah, it's due Thursday. It kind of got problems, let me know. Um, oh. Yeah, I think, this, I think this is a little bit better. I think you did a nice job of kind of cleaning up the letters a little bit, um, making them a little bit more, a little more legible here. Um, you know, I think we still want a little more gap between um, this shape and and the word Hell's Travel. Um, so we just kind of collect those. It's kind of like pulling them aside. I'm getting just grouping off here, um, but giving it some space. So they kind of feel like they're going together, but there's a little bit of a gap here. If you get things too close it makes it hard to read. So like when it's that close, it's hard, but if it pulled it back a little bit, it gives it its own space. We call it breathing room. Um, okay. Where sometimes you hear it called white space in design. So it's basically this, this negative space that lets 
let your eye take a break and breathe and, and understand things a lot. So good job though, nice. Keep working it, you're close, right? But you know, like the E is hitting the ass. You're gonna get this. You're very, very close on this. So I don't know if I wanna go to our travel agent called Hell's Travel, but you know, who knows? But you know, there's a place called Hell, Norway. There's a town called Hell. I saw this on some game show, watching it the other night with my kid. Um, I think it was the chase or something like that, something stupid. And there was a place called Hell and it's in, it's in Norway. So you can tell people to go to hell and it's in Norway. Dude, go to hell, Norway that is. All right, um, anything else? Other questions? Good. Okay, so guys have a good, good Wednesday, good rest of the Tuesday. I'll see you Thursday, send over your files. Um, you know, keep working on them. If you have problems, let me know. Uh, we're just going to keep going. Okay. Um, if you have questions on Instagram, let me know. If you don't have an Instagram, start one. If you have one, start hashtagging. See if you can get your numbers up. Um, we said we're going to look at that number real quick and let you go with that. Where are we? Let's see what that picture got to since we posted it. Anybody want to guess? Over 100. 600, <laughs> 647. Okay, and that was done 30 minutes ago. Um, oh. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be seven, eight thousand by the time we have class next, maybe more. Um, it's a nice picture. Don't and don't be don't be like you know. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. Sometimes beautiful ones get a lot of likes. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. Um, it really depends. Depends on the. This was this morning four thousand. This one was right before class, and it's eighteen hundred. Um, 11,000 Joshua tree got some snow, it's kind of cool. 7,000, 12,000. So these are both my pictures. One I got seven, 6,700. I was talking about Pi Day in um, Capitol Reef National Park. They have a little house and they make pies, they sell it. Um, so I just used my picture, that's my daughter when we went. I am crazy like that. And this was, I'm talking about the wolves and are, are doing the, um, the talk up there. And this is Yellowstone, you know, and this has got, you know, 12,000. So it, it, it's crazy, you know, stuff I think is like really awesome. It's going to blow up. Like I said, the, this was just kind of a, I think it's a beautiful picture, but it's 34,000. So um, don't worry about it, guys. Just put it up and post. Um, have a good time while doing it. And if you have questions, let me know. Like I said, I'm here to help you, uh, but do it. If you haven't done it, do it. If you're already doing it, hashtag it. Start liking pictures, looking at people's hashtags. Um, I think you're gonna find that you, you can grow pretty efficiently, okay? All right, questions? Let me get back up here with her. All no right. Questions from me? All right, guys. Um, have a great day, and we will see each other on Thursday. All right. All right. See y'all. Thank you. Thank you.